Mijares against Jose Navarro. And you can see that they're both 26 years old. Mijares is from Gomez Palacio, Mexico, and Navarro is from Los Angeles. Uh, Half-inch arm length advantage measured from the armpit to the end of the fist for Navarro. They both weighed in officially at 115. Both have gone up overnight. Miharis, 8 pounds. Navarro, 11 pounds unofficially. Rules, Harold Letterman. The Christian Miharis, Jose Navarro fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules that you see on your screen. Jim, real quick, the four criteria that the judges will use to score each individual round. Clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship and defense with a strong emphasis on clean effective punching. Jim! Navarro's never lost in the United States. Mijares is coming off a huge win over Jorge Arce. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, from the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, Nevada, Top Rank Incorporated and DeBella Entertainment present more boxing action. This is a world championship contest. Again, sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission and sponsored by American Gangster. Starring Denzel Washington and Russell Crowe. Own the two-disc unrated edition on DVD or HD DVD this Tuesday. The three judges assigned to ringside scoring this bout will be Adelaide Bird, Doug Tucker, and Chris Wilson. And inside the ring, your referee in charge of the action, Russell Mora. And now... 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Flyweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white, trimmed with blue, official weight, 115 pounds. This U.S. Olympian now has a professional record, standing at 26 victories, including 12 knockouts, only three defeats, from Los Angeles, California, Jose Navarro. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing black with gold, official weight also 115 pounds. As a professional, 33 victories, including 13 knockouts, three defeats, two bouts even, from Gomez Palacio Durango, Mexico, making his fourth championship defense the reigning and defending WBC Super Flyweight World Champion Christian Mihari. Gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want to remind you, protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. Ocuerdesen, quiero una pelea limpia, Dios los bendigas, token want this. Touch up. God bless. They call it super flyweight. I like junior bantamweight better. It sounds bigger. Navarro, all three losses in title fights abroad. In one of them, one judge gave him every round, and he lost the decision. Navarro's three losses took place in Japan and Russia. He lost twice in Japan and once in Russia. For Mijares, perhaps equally as impressive as his destruction of Arce last year is that he has twice gone to Japan and won, uh, bringing back the WBC title belt that he now holds from a victory over the star Japanese fighter. Break. with whom other Mexican fighters have had some difficulties. Kawashima, or, or I should say Katsushige Kawashima. Uh, Mejares went to both Yokohama and Tokyo and beat Katsushima twice. That's not very easy to do. No, in fact, I was looking at these two guys and both very, very talented fighters. And you see the big grin on Mejares' face uh, before the introductions. He's all glamour. Does the expert commentary, Larry, on uh, Televisa in Mexico. On the job training for his uh, post fight life. Smiles while he fights. And Navarro is being more aggressive than he usually is because he knows he has to make the fight. The fourth attempt at a title, how many more can he get? A make or break fight. For Jose Navarro, he said so himself yesterday. Navarro has this little grin on his face as though 
I know what you're doing. Let him go, let him go, let him go. It ain't going to be enough. He's not only a very confident fighter, he's almost just downright arrogant. <laughs> Lots of confidence in himself. A three and a half to one favorite. So he should be confident. One of those guys who has three losses but has improved significantly in the last couple of years. You think of Umberto Soto, Antonio Margarito, other fighters who, for whatever reason, amassed a couple or a few losses early in their career and then suddenly blossomed, and you can't beat them. Although Soto's winning streak recently came to an end. As did Margarito's last year against Paul Williams. Bihara's head no, speed is just a step little back, bit back. faster than Navarro, plus his upper body movement. He's very, very sharp with his upper body movement. He twists, turns, pivots, goes underneath punches. And then he's always in a position to deliver punches while he's doing that. Another very yes. tall fighter in his division. Very great upper body movement. Has a great guy. Hands are free. Navarro's trying to stay inside on him, not give him the taller fighter with the longer reach room to function. Cristian Mijares of Mexico in the black trunks. Jose Navarro of East Los Angeles in the white. Not a bad round. This is some honor. Take a deep breath, Joe. Breathe. Okay. This, this guy's a boxer, yo. I want you to try to get him a lead first, and you counter, and counter more with that right jab. The left hand lead, uh, I'd rather have you throw a jab, left cross, and then finish up with the right hand. Don't go left hand lead. Use the jab. You're faster than he is. Jab, jab, jab. Just jab. Keep jabbing. Fake him. And then keep jabbing. Are you okay? Good. Now keep good cover up. Copy box numbers for round one reflect the precise approach of Cristian Mijares. He was 16 of 58. He allowed Navarro to throw 86 punches, but Navarro could land only 10. And Emmanuel, that goes to what you talked about, the excellent upper body movement and overall athletic coordination of Mijares in the black trunks. Yes, always oh, very great balance and position. But Jose is not bad himself, but it's just that Mijares is exceptionally well coordinated and very crafty a little fighter. And in your mind's eye, as you watch this, if you didn't see their fight, you can totally understand how Mijares' precise boxing style might have tied Jorge Arce in knots, because Arce is an all-out hell-bent aggressor. Yeah, and, and, and Mijares doesn't do a lot of moving. He doesn't bring a lot of energy up moving around. He just works by fielding punches, as we say, moving just enough to let a guy miss and still being in position. Incidentally, that's the kind of defense Kelly Pavlik plays to the degree that he plays defense. He doesn't really try not to get hit so much as to limit the damage of the punch that hits him. Yeah, Kelly has really improved a lot. I, I was very surprised at his last fight. Even though Larry questions his defense the way he got hit a lot, according to Larry, I thought he did very good. Well, we'll see what happens tonight <laughs> in an entirely different environment, incidentally. That could have something to do with how the fight feels when it takes place. And go break! Step back, step back, let him go. It's a challenge to Navarro not to become frustrated while missing as often as he'll have to miss to try to find ways to get at me, Horace. Let go, let go. Break! No, no. Hands are free. Keep it clean. Hands are free, guys. Keep clean. Keep clean. Break! Get him up. Get him up. Punches up. Accurate counter punches by Christian Mahares. And Navarro's right to him is not too much to choose between the two of them this round. Good right, good right hand. Yeah. Yeah. Nice Nav little right. Navarro's coming along and a lot of good punches also. 
you get the impression that Navarro can shorten up his punches and make them a little tighter and straighter, he'll have a better chance of making solid impact on Mijares. Jim, you're absolutely right. I'm going to say just a little difference is his punches has a little bit more loop in it than Mahara's, and that seems to be the only difference between them. Because other than that, the fight is very tight in terms of punches landed. You know, Emmanuel, you were talking about all of the juniors in the sport right now. It's him. It's him. It's a nose. It's a nose. Man. Next Saturday will be a special night of boxing programming here on HBO on the East Coast. It's the premiere of the film Joe Lewis, America's Hero Betrayed, followed by the live heavyweight unification fight, Klitschko versus Ibrahimov on the West Coast. It's the live fight, followed by the Joe Lewis film. And in attendance for the fight here tonight, the son of Joe Lewis, Joe Lewis Barrow, right there, Joe Louis Barrow Jr. with the junior graphic and a beautiful smile. And he happens to be seated next to Roy Jones Jr. <laughs> in the junior row, where you assume Julio Cesar, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. and Ronald Hearns are going to sit later on. And then off there in the corner, we can just see his ear is Bill Richardson, the governor of New Mexico, former presidential aspirant. Okay. We're going to watch all that. All right. Combi box numbers in round two. Mijares was 19 out of 66, 29%. Navarro, 12 out of 95, 13%. Now we're into round three. Get the sense that Maharas, even though he probably won the first two rounds, was hit a little bit more than he was planning on. And so suddenly he's coming out in a different posture, standing up very straight um, and trying to use his height and reach a little bit. Larry, I was just about to say that. Looking at the facial expression on his face, he, even though he's winning, I think he's having a much rougher time than he anticipated. I can just see it in his face. And uh, the fight is, uh, and he's going into a very serious mode right now because Navarro, even though he may be behind, is, is making us a very tight and uncomfortable fight for. Well, Navarro. at least he wiped the grin off his face, whether he won the round or not. Hard right hand by Navarro. Good flurry inside by Mijares. If you were listening to my voiceover at the beginning of the evening, you may have heard me say that we expected to be looking at three of the top four fighters in the world in the 115 pound weight class that reference was to Mijares, montiel and castillo the fighters who are in the next fight the one who was left out was navarro right now navarro is fighting very well and trying to stay on the same water level as christian Mijares. Uh, uh, we should note that uh navarro's trunks are bloody and it's probably from uh, his own nosebleed Exactly right, I believe, yes. Combination by Navarro landed. Combination by Mijares lands in return. A couple of good body shots by Mijares. Seems to be a little bit more conscious of throwing to the body than is Navarro. See the hand speed of both fighters inside. One of the joys of watching a weight class like 115. Nice three-punch combination by Mijares there. I wouldn't want to have a broken nose, however, in fighting Mahars. You can pepper that nose at will like that. Mahars leans against the ropes and gets a momentary rest. Navarro trying to take advantage of it. Good right hand counter punch upstairs by Mahars. A big hook. Back Navarro off. Another good right hook by Mihars. Navarro just missing with a straight left hand. Good brisk boxing match. Go break! Three rounds in the books. Cristian Mihares defending a 115 pound title belt. And there's Julio Cesar Chavez Sr., if you want to use that term. Larry mentioned, working here as a broadcaster tonight, thus the tuxedo, a subject about which we can talk for quite some time, but why bother? 
That smile still a beacon to millions of Mexican fans. He also has a younger son who is supposed to be yeah. a, a prospect. Yeah, Omar, who was uh, only five years old when I was training Helio. Uh, it's interesting now that he has both of his sons fighting. You got him here, a good hit, a good hook to the liver. Come on, and re repeat that with the left, with the right. Navarro fighting the smartest fight he possibly can. It shouldn't come as a surprise. In high school, he didn't get an A in just one subject. 3.8 grade average in Los Angeles High School. A dispute with the teacher, incidentally. <laughs> Harold, how do you have it so far? <laughs> okay, Jim, three rounds, three rounds to nothing, three to nothing, 30 to 27, Christian B. Harris. Jim, I'm impressed with his right jab. I tell you, I think he's just doing too much landing, too many of those right jabs. He doubles it, I'm talking about me, Harris. Doubles it, triples it, sometimes four punches at a time. Yeah, just like you see right there. He works that right jab real, real well, and he's, you know, he seems to be getting the best of Navarro. Three to nothing, me, Harris, based on clean punching. Slip. Let's go. Emmanuel, I don't know when I've seen a small fighter fight as upright as Miharas does while still being fluid and athletic. It's, it's very interesting, and he, and he has a good distance. He keeps just the right distance, not a lot unnecessarily moving. And he'll pull back sometimes when you come at him and count, and the next time he'll drop down and bit bob and weave to the inside. So you don't really know what kind of target to punch at. You know, I say he was the star of this division. You know, an emotional, Wait. aggressive, no, 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 no. fun fighter to watch. The cowboy hat, the lollipops, the insults to all his opponents. <laughs> you wonder, though, if Harris can achieve that with this style given the preferences of Mexican fans and Mexican culture for brave, tough, relentless fighters. And he's just opposite of all of that. Very technical, very smart, beautiful to watch, but not the explosive, exciting, hit and get hit type of fight style that we normally label Mexican fighters with a lot. But lately, all of these Mexican guys, a lot of them are being very technical fighters now. Culturally, Mijares and Arce are as different as Gene Tunney and Jack Dempsey. And there's no, there's no questioning where the love will have begun. Mijares is going to have to earn it over a long period of time, it would appear to me. Two more quick right hooks from Mijares. Your hands are free, guys. Break! Stop! Get him up. Well, we've been talking about Lower Mexico's Jorge Arce, and there he is. Seated at ringside watching the fight, always with an electric smile on his face and probably without much of his self-confidence diminished by the unexpected last, uh, loss last year to uh, Mijares. Larry, where does Arce fit into the division now? Well, when you've been a star, and he was also a star in some reality shows uh, that made him even bigger, it just takes one good win to bring you back. We've seen that with Deloya, for example. So I'm sure somewhere along the way they'll find an opponent who's a good opponent and give him a chance to shine again. Still with the promotional power of top rank on which to rely. Always a formidable force on behalf of the fighter. Through four rounds, copy box averages per round, Navarro landing 11 out of 87. Christian Mijares, much more precise, 18 out of 59 by CompuBox count. That's the average for each round. Oh, 
Body shot by Navarro. Sneaked under the guard of Mijares. You know, for a guy who looks like uh, a very aware and technically pure fighter, <laughs> Navarro said a couple things at the fighter meetings yesterday that had us shaking our heads and wondering if he really meant it. Such as, I don't pay much attention to how opponents fight. Recently, I beat a southpaw, and my trainer said, it's good that you beat another southpaw. And I said, really? Was he a southpaw? Didn't notice. <laughs> yeah, I've never heard of that from anybody. Never heard that. <laughs> It's a guy with a very long and decorated amateur career, went to the Olympics, claims that he went into the ring and knocked a guy out without even noticing that he was a southpaw. Not sure I believe that. Well, it speaks for his focus. I do my thing and I don't worry about the opponent. It's proud of him having all those amateur fights to you going to the tournaments night after night after night after night. And you just you don't have time to study opponents and watch films for weeks and weeks. You just fight whatever's there. And you may not even realize that you fought a southpaw, but that's still unusual. You guys say he didn't even know he was fighting a uh, head fought a southpaw. We're accustomed to saying that Mexican American fighters from the Los Angeles area come from East Los Angeles. Watch your head, guys. Watch your head. Navarro comes from South Central Los Angeles, known around the world as the Hood. And lives with his wife and two children and his in-laws. A good, sound, fundamental fighter. But Mahars is way above average. But Mahars is very uncomfortable with the situation. Even though he's winning, I think it's up, not where he's very satisfied with, with the uh, banner blows as he's been hit with himself tonight. Well, this despite the fact that once this round is over in 10 seconds, he may well have won every round on Harold Letterman's scorecard so far. But he's getting hit a little bit now more than he was earlier, even though he's winning. Time! Moments ago, referee Tony Weeks giving main event referee's instructions to middleweight champion Kelly Pavlik in his dressing room. Okay, knockdowns. We go to the furthest neutral corner, stay there until I tell you to come out. If you come out any time during the fight, I'll stop the fight and send you back. Wait for me to tell you to resume the fight. Do we have two mouthpieces? Yes. yes. Okay, now understand. If I feel that you're spitting that mouthpiece out to gain any type of advantage, I'm not going to come over to the corner. I'm going to reinsert it myself. Okay. Uh, okay? If, if, if it comes out and there's nothing happening, then I come over to you, we wash it out, and then go through the No instructions, no water. We can get back to fighting again. Right. Okay? Any questions or concerns at this uh, time? Hello. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Like I said, the we talked before, yeah. punches by the head uh -huh. and the elbows. Okay. We're going to watch last all last that. Yeah. All sure. right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Because that thing sticks pretty tight in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> right. Good luck. Oh, All thank right. you. Okay. Pavlik says that at the time of the first fight with Taylor in Atlantic City in September, he was not conscious of getting hit behind the head, but now believes that he got tagged behind the head several times in that second round assault by Taylor. When a guy's throwing big right hands over the top and you're ducking or trying to slip the punches underneath, you're liable to get hit in the back of the head sometimes. Yeah, and he's probably about off that. And if Jermaine had to settle in and threw a straight punch right to the chin, <laughs> that's when he might have been really in trouble. <laughs> probably better to take some of those winging right hands to the back of the head, huh? Yeah, he took a lot of it, and he survived it. And incidentally, you saw the Affliction T-shirt. We're told that uh, of all the marketing and sponsorship offers that came to Kelly Pavlik after the victory over Taylor, and some of them came from some of the biggest athletic wear com companies in the world, the biggest money offer came from Affliction. I haven't heard of them, but certainly Pavlik has been an Affliction to 29 of the 32 fighters he's fought so far. That's the knockout strength, including nine in a row. Round six of a scheduled 12, Christian Mijares, 115-pound title holder in the black trunks, Jose Navarro of South Central Los Angeles in the white. Navarro was a teammate of Jermaine Taylor's 
on the 2000 United States Olympic team in Sydney. Incidentally, Emmanuel Stewart, what can American fight fans expect from the United States amateur boxing team in Beijing this summer? Well, we have a couple of good kids, but overall, it's, we're not that strong. The, uh, the fact that we have kids haven't had a, a lot of international experience, and we have to start rebuilding every 48 months against the same international team from other countries which to this go from one Olympics to another. Yeah, there's a there's a Chinese flyweight um, I read about, you know, who might become the richest amateur in the world because they want a gold medal so badly. And, it, and he's Chinese. The Chinese want to win the medal count in Beijing. And lest you laugh, break, break. you might look back and note that I believe they were third in the medal count at Athens four years ago. Behind the USA and Germany. Well, when, when an Olympics happens, the country starts to arm, you know, with more money for their amateur athletic programs, um, more time off for amateur athletes to train in every sport. Um, national pride uh, sets in to justify the huge expense of bringing an Olympics to Perfect. a country. Perfectly said. And, and it often pays off. The home court advantage at Olympics is astonishing. If you look at how many medals are won by home team athletes. Well, you're attacking doing real good. And he's taking those punches. Come on. Come on. Where's the water? Come on, you've got to throw more punches now. Come on. Throw more punches. Come on, this is your title. This is your title. You have to defend it. Right here, right here. Okay. I can't breathe. Don't worry. Here you see a perfect example of great eye and hand coordination of Maharis. He lands a shot inside of a punch and then gets underneath a punch and is still in position to punch again. These two fighters have had 67 fights between them, just 25 knockouts. So we think we know where this fight is going. In the last round, Mihara has only threw 50 punches, his low output for the fight. Navarro threw 108, but Navarro only landed 11% of his, and Mihara has landed 34% of his. And Harold, how do you have it through six? Okay, Jim, I thought Jose Navarro did enough, and Christian Mihara didn't do enough in that fifth round, and I gave the fifth round to uh, Jose Navarro. You mean five the sixth? The sixth round, Poppy. Five rounds to one. 59-55, Christian Meharis. I mean, Jim, he works that right jab beautifully, sets up combinations, you know, comes across with that straight left hand. Really, he, he's got really good ring generalship. I mean, goes to his right, keeps Navarro off balance with that right jab. Five to one, Meharis. Jose Navarro showing the urgency of a fighter who believes that his career may be on the line. Christian Mejares standing in, occasionally taking punishment from Navarro, just as frequently finding opportunities to counter and continue in defense of his title. Good left hand over the top by Navarro. Mejares rolling with the punch a little bit. Good uppercuts inside by Mijares. Yeah, it's, it's interesting now. He's been fighting at a distance. Now he's fighting in close range and still very effective inside by blocking punches and, short, yeah. and shortening up his own punches. He's, he's very a, diversified. He's administering a systematic beating, but Navarro is just trying his best to hang in there with him. He's just not as well armed 
And it's such a joy to watch Mihara's defend. He slips a punch with his head. He blocks a punch with his glove. He moves back away from a punch. He sets his feet at an angle that makes it impossible for him to be hit. It's unbelievable. I mean, it's not really unbelievable. It's impressive how many ways he knows how to defend. Navarro's nose bleeding heavily now. Niharis has spent much of this round picking off Navarro's shots with his gloves and countering straight up the middle. Navarro comes on with a rally at the end to keep his fans in the fight. And moments ago, Tony Weeks made it down the hall to Jermaine Taylor's dressing room for referee's instructions. How you doing? Doing good. All uh, right, Jermaine, how you doing? Okay, we're going to go with the unified rules of boxing, which means no standing eight count. Can't be saved by the bell in any round, including the last and final round. Okay? Three knockdown rulers way. However, after so many knockdowns, it's going to be my discretion when I'm going to stop a fight. All right? Watch all your fouls. Low blows, kidney punches, rabbit punches, hitting on the break, hitting after the bell. Any foul that I feel is intentional will be automatic two-point deduction for an intentional foul. Along those same lines, if the fighter goes down, do not hit him. It's going to be my discretion whether uh, a blow is on, or on his way as opposed to hitting the guy when he's down, okay? If, you, if, if, if he holding you and you have one hand free, you can punch it that one hand. But you, uh, he's got to be in a legal area, but you cannot hold and hit. Happy box numbers in the seventh round. Navarro, 18 of 122, throwing and throwing and throwing. Nihara is 26 out of 89. Aside from your departure, Emmanuel, as head trainer to uh, Jermaine Taylor, any other changes in that dressing room? Uh, well, uh, uh, we have uh, Woody, uh, who's wrapping his hand. His, uh, Trains up in Colorado Springs with the kids up there. He's, he's having a map. But other than that, it's not much of a change. And I think it's interesting. Both guys are going into this fight with the two trainers who started them out together. And that's why Jose Nelson was a little bit surprised. He says all of the criticism he's got for training his fighter, Jermaine, when he feels that Jack is doing the same thing with his fighter. And he hasn't gotten criticism. So yeah. it's, it's a thing that Jose Nelson is going to be very much after having a lot to prove. So the trainers have a a battle going on among themselves, too, to some degree. That's right. We mentioned Jack Lowe's incendiary quote to the effect that he's happy that Taylor's bringing Ozell Nelson back because Nelson's the guy who taught him all those bad habits as a kid. And Nelson points out, wait a minute, when we met in the Olympic trials back in the year 2000, those mistakes were good enough for Jermaine Taylor to beat Kelly Pavlik yeah, and, and go on to Sydney. And both of the same guys were in their fighter's corner at that time. But one guy was 17, one was 21, too. Watch your hands. Get up like this. Havlick at 17. Yes, yes, yes. Clearly still coming into his body. He made a great yeah. point yesterday about how he really never saw himself as a power punching, puncher and didn't have power punching until he reached his maximum height and his body began to fill out. Like most tall fighters, as an amateur, Thomas Harris was the same way. Most tall fighters, as amateurs, they may go up a division, but they usually grow about two inches, so they're still not strong. And finally, when they stabilize, then it starts coming, the strength starts coming in when the height stops. You know, uh, Maharis uh, has bruises below both eyes. Probably wake up with a couple of black eyes tomorrow, uh, as well as with a victory and a, and a check. But he knows he's been in a fight, even if he dominates Three. it. Step back. This has been a terrific fight for boxing purists to appreciate because of all the skill that's on display. Yeah, and and Navarro is doing a really good job. If it wasn't such an exceptional fighter like Mahers, he would be looking like the crispy in boxer and the technician. So it'll be interesting to watch the next fight, also at 115 pounds, and do a thumbnail comparison between those two fighters and the ones you're watching here. When I think about the Mexican fighters from years back, I think about the big punchers, Jose Becerra and Ruben Castillo. It's, it's a difference now that these guys are basically a... Uh, Ruben Olivares, I mean, Ruben Olivares, but they were basically boxer punches, more punches than boxers. There is Harry Arroyo, a former lightweight champion, not as well known as Ray Mancini, but both 
from Youngstown and both here to support the Youngstown champion of this moment, Kelly Pavlik. Harry with an Affliction t-shirt on under that good looking sport coat. And uh, <laughs> that is uh, the only significantly named fighter, the only recognized fighter uh, on a national scale ever to have been trained by Jack Lowe other than Kelly Pavlik. And that was briefly at the end of Arroyo's career. So Jack Lowe's prominence really comes from Kelly Pavlik. Youngstown's well, prominence is established via Arroyo, Mancini, now Pavlik, and there have been some other fighters as well. well. You know, and, and since Pavlik's uh, knockout uh, string in the last year or two, uh, Lowe has twice as many fighters under him, amateurs, as he had before. So uh, we will see another fighter come from Youngstown someday. And of course, an advantage now is that if Lowe finds a fighter whom he likes or who he thinks has potential, he can bring him directly to top rank and try to prevail upon top rank to give him the benefit of their promotional expertise. Good fight, getting better. Closer range, more contact, even than in the earlier rounds. This is a pretty good round for Navarro so far. Don't go, break! Sit back, sit back. Let go. Sit back. I, th I think Navarro is standing in, I'm sorry, uh, um, Maharis is standing and fighting, uh, not necessarily because he just made the decision to, but because Navarro is making him stand and fight. Yeah, and I was just <laughs> thinking about it. they both have to be in great condition at the pace that they're going. In. And I think Maharis may uh, have slowed down a little bit with his legs, I guess, because of a little fatigue, and he's fighting. More of an inside fight. Even though he's doing very well, it's still not him. It's best when he keeps a distance. He's got the blood streaming again from Navarro's nose, and it is bothering Navarro at some moments. We've seen him pawing at his nose with his glove on at least two occasions in this round. Yeah. Now, I get the impression, Emmanuel, correct me if I'm wrong, that Navarro is actually technically a little superior. It's just that Maharas is just bigger, a little bit of a better athlete. No, I, I think... Except for just effort. With effort, I think that Maharaj is more superior than myself. I think he's more accurate pinpoint punches. And uh, that's all the way around better fighter, but not by a big margin. I think he has significantly better defensive skills. He won this round easily. Come on, that's the way you need to work the rest of them. Where's the towel now? You've got nothing. You've got nothing. There's no cuts. Nothing. Come on, you won the round. We won the round, but we need a bigger margin. But you've got to press. You've got to press. Don't give him the chance. Come on, he's going to come in and he's going to punch you. Unnecessary damage. Why? You're winning a round. Move away and we'll counter punch it. Okay, a little water. CompuBox numbers in nine are pretty unreal. Mihar is 31 out of 94, landing at a 33% rate. Navarro, 22 out of 133. Together, they threw 227 punches. 
Harold, how do you have it through now? Uh, okay, Jim. Seven rounds to two. 88, 83, Christian Meharis. Jim, I gotta tell you, Meharis is just too quick. He outworks him. You know, round nine was a very interesting round. The Harris went toe to toe with Navarro, and that's where he doesn't want to be. I mean, when he moves, when he moves to the right, he keeps him off balance. Like he's right there. But anyway, in the ninth round, I mean, he, he was beautiful on the inside. So, seven rounds to two, Christian Meharis basically on clean punching. And a free guys. Navarro is averaging more than 100 punches per round. Not all that frequently do we see a fighter throw more than 100 punches per round and lose. Certainly, it's well within the realm of conception here. Let him go, let him go, bring! No, no, no. He wanted to put Navarro, I'm sorry. Um, he wanted to put Maharis on the defensive, but Maharis has shown that from the defensive position, he can get very offensive. Yeah, he, he's very good on the inside, outside, blocking and countering at the same time. Then he gets a distance between you, starts working his jab. Very good with short punches as well as long punches. Maharis. Get him up. Time. No, no, no. Get him up. Let's go. Get him up. Let's go. By the way, if you're one of those intensely knowledgeable fans of the sport, and having listened to our discussion, you're saying, well, wait a minute. Did Paul Williams average 100 punches around in losing to Carlos Quintana last week? The answer is no. Williams did not reach his often reached watermark of 100 punches per round. That's partially because Quintana was hitting him with that left hand and taking advantage of open shots. Yeah, and you know, Quintana never did get wrapped up in a, a volume of punches contest, which I give him credit for. He just placed his punches very effectively, and that's what, uh, what counted. The judges looked at punches landed, not punches thrown. When they're judging well, they do. <laughs> Good right, left hand by Navarro. Clean shot. Body shot by Navarro, body shot by Mihari. We don't know her name, but this is the dominant Vegas round card girl. She is uh, <laughs> going on about probably her 10th year of doing this here at the MGM Grand. And if there's one face you recognize, or one physical form you recognize among round card girls in Vegas, she's the one. Well, we have a lot of veteran fighters. Why shouldn't we have some veteran round card girls? She's had quite a career. She's had more big fights than any fighter. <laughs> Copy box numbers in 10. A Harris, 21 out of 88. 15 out of 53 power shots. Navarro, 16 out of 96. 15 out of 54 power shots. Navarro has bled from the nose through much of the fight, and both of his eyes are swollen. A Harris's eyes are swollen underneath. Has there been a clinch in this fight? Not to my knowledge. They're just standing two feet apart from each other, thrusting and parrying, punching and blocking. It's textbook stuff with the blood. So, Emmanuel, you're making an excellent point a few rounds ago and talking about how it used to be. Almost invariably, a Mexican fighter from this or a neighboring weight class would have been more of a puncher than a boxer. In recent years, we've seen that change significantly. And the three Mexican fighters who 
are on this card in the 115 pound weight class. Mijares, Montiel, Castillo are all boxer punchers who are at least as much boxers as punchers. And now there's a cut over the right eye of Jose Navarro and a lot of blood. And this is really going to be bothersome for the remaining round and a half of the fight. Over there. Over there. Come here. Referee Russell Mora is going to take a look. That's okay. Okay? Let's go, guys. It's a little bit off to the side. I don't... I, it's hard to tell from where we're sitting if it's dripping into his eye and imperiling his sight. Had to come from a punch. I haven't even seen anything that looked like a butt. These two guys are so skilled and so adept inside, they don't tend Wait, to bang, bang heads. No, but the punch that they showed on the screen uh, really landed more on the, the cheek more so than the average. I still can't figure out exactly where it come from. You know, Navarro's giving such a gritty, gutty performance that uh, he'll be in demand after this fight, as, of course, will Maharis. Take a look. Punch. Okay, thank you. Let's go, guys. Box. The referee just indicated that the cut is a result of a punch, not of a butt. Good exchanges. And I'm told that between rounds, we'll show you exactly the punch that produced that cut over the right eye of Navarro. And still Navarro comes. But now it is getting Tony Zale, Rocky Graziano, Bruce Grusso. Good hard left hand by Navarro. Nahara's motioning with the gloves as this to say, come on, good fight. Yeah. Good. All right, Alfie. All right. Don't dismiss it to me. That was a beautiful round. And you, you got to use your heart muscle now. Your heart muscle with intelligence, okay? You look good there. You got to close the distance and force the street fight. This guy's more tired than you. You understand me? And when he... Joe. Okay. Last round, we're touching gloves. Can you see all right? Yeah, I'm sure. Joe, when he runs away from you, you got to cut the ring. Don't go straight forward, okay? Start it. Here, here you see something very really unusual. It's a straight left that landed right in the eye. It seems like it did the damage because it hit the spot, but it's a follow-up punch that seems like spreaded the skin and caused the blood to flow, which is the right hand that came after that. Interesting. So it's a two-punch cut. Yes, almost three, really. <laughs> that was fascinating because you could literally see how the second punch opened it up. And incidentally, I... Uh, Navarro landed 29 out of 139 in that round, the 30 of 102 for Mijares, and Harold Letterman gave the round to Navarro, shortening the margin on his scorecard as we come to the 12th. And you heard the words from Navarro's corner, use your heart muscle, make it a street fight. He's going to have to do it with blood streaming from above his right eye. And from, his, and from both nostrils. And, you know, we've mentioned many times the tendency of some judges to score the blood. Almost impossible to ignore it. You know, in a fight going into the last round with a guy as skillful as Mahara's is, you have a hand on points and then they have blood pouring down your face. That's a tremendous handicap. Well, and Mahara's looks like he's decided not to get into a full-on toe-to-toe exchange with Navarro in this round. No, 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 no. Don't push him down. Give me gloves. Give me gloves. Let's go. Which is not to say that he's running or have, that he stopped fighting. It's it's a little more subtle than that. Right. What brilliant defensive movement by Miharis with good counter punching to follow. Unbelievable bias. He can, he, he can see punches coming from any position he's in, which is just a gift. It's something you can't teach. 
Because we're getting back to the Mexican styles before, but most of the Mexicans, at least like Navarro, he's really a Mexican American. Raised here in the part of he's on the Olympic team, so he fights American style. And so many of the Mexican fighters are training and living here in the United States a lot. And that's why they're, they're, they're blending other styles together. They fight more like Americans than they are like Mexicans. But the globalization of boxing really means that we aren't going to see regional or national styles anymore. Fighters fight. Eastern European fighters have become flexible. Some of them are American style boxer punchers now. We see finesse fighters from Mexico. We see Asian bombers. Any any kind of fighter can come from anywhere at this stage of the game. I like your word globalization. That's what's happening.